In my mind, the mantra used to be trust but verify. But in this day and age, I think that the new mantra has to be trust no one. And I have landed on this because of all the crazy stuff that has come my way in the last couple of weeks. Stay tuned. Reggie here, and I want to welcome you to another one of my videos. I promise you this will not be a rant video. I do, however, want to share a little of my frustration, maybe offer up some tips and pointers, and I will also show you some cool books in this video, some books that I recently picked up, so I will do that uh, to balance it all out. But I am honestly a little frustrated, and I am a little frustrated because I continue to hear stories of people in the community that are being taken advantage of by bad actors. And I've been saying this for a very long time, that if money is involved, people will find a way to try to take advantage of us. And to some degree or another, we continue to let it happen. We are opening the doors, opening our wallets, and allowing these scammers to reach inside and grab our cash. And we honestly have to stop it. Again, as I said at the beginning of this video, the mantra used to be trust but verify. But I think the new mantra has to be trust no one. And I say that because the scammers are getting smarter. The things that we have put in place that used to protect us a little bit more, they found ways around some of those things and they are evolving. And because the scammers and bad actors are evolving, we too need to evolve. So what do I mean by that? Once upon a time, it was, it was a belief that if you got a phone number for someone and you could talk to a person on the phone and you could hear their voice, that that person was safe. That person was okay. Like I can do business with you because I've spoken to you on the phone. The scammers are now using burner phones and fake phone numbers to have conversations with us on the phone to convince us and persuade us that everything is okay. I am like you. I am a member of the community. You can trust me and send me your hard earned cash and rest assured that I'm going to send you this really awesome book that you want. That is false. The phone calls cannot save us anymore because they have found a way to use the phone to, again, overcome our, 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 our tendencies to push back on certain things. And they are still, again, taking advantage of us. So the phone can't save us anymore. So the scammers have found a way around the phone call. They have also found a way around another safety net that many of us have depended upon. That being the census data, the ability to look up a comic in the census report to give you some comfort that the book that you are buying remotely is actually a legit comic. By now, I'm pretty sure many of you have already heard about the scam that is taking place in the Pacific Northwest, where someone is basically creating fake versions of comics, artificially aging those comics, placing them inside of CGC cases, and basically having the census description of that book match the fake comic that they've placed inside of that case. Many people have relied upon the census data as a, a safety net. If you can find the book in the census and you can look it up, you know that it's legit. That gives you a certain amount of comfort. Just like the phone calls that the scammers have found a way around, they are finding a way to leverage another one of our safety nets and they again are taking advantage of us. They are evolving, which means that we too need to find a way to evolve. And potentially the evolution for many of us might need to be only buying from reputable companies, buying from reputable websites, reputable apps, reputable dealers, and potentially not dealing with some unseen, unknown individual on the internet. If you potentially can't do business with that person, with a reputable company, try to do business with that person face to face. That will give you the opportunity to visually inspect that comic, to be able to check the cases, to make sure that 
someone hasn't used a filter and applied it to a comic to make the comic look a little bit better than what it actually looks like in person because that too is a little bit of a scam that I've heard out there as well. People using filters to make a comic look a little bit better and when you get it, it doesn't quite resemble the photos because that filter was applied. Anytime money is involved, there will be some bad actors at play. Another important thing I think that we have to do is we have to find a way to take our emotions out of the decisions that we make. And I say that not because I'm trying to take someone's joy, but because the scammers rely upon us being emotional. They rely upon that. They tell us sob stories about the financial troubles that they happen to be in in an attempt to overcome, you know, our the red flags that we're seeing and maybe that that voice in the back of our head. They use those emotions. They use our desire to have this really awesome book at this really great price. Greed, if you will, because it is an emotion. They find a way to leverage these things to separate you from your money and to rope you into this scam. So we might have to take the emotion out of it, separate ourselves from the transaction, slow it down, evaluate what is being put in front of you. And I think we also cannot ignore the red flags. We cannot ignore them because a lot of times your gut will tell you what the answer is, but we suppress it because we want the book, we want the deal, and we ignore it. And that is partly how we get taken advantage of. So let's just say that you choose not to do business with a shop or a dealer or a website or an app. You still want to do business with individuals. That is perfectly fine. Take some precautions. Do not use Cash App, Zelle, or Venmo. Do not use those platforms because they offer you zero buyer protection. And yes, you have to pay some fees. Yes, the seller has to pay some fees and potentially what you're buying will actually go up, but pay the fees because by paying the fees, you actually get the protection because one of the scams that they will run is, hey, let's do it off this app. Let's do it off of here. Let's just Venmo me the money, uh, Zelle me the money, cash at me the money and I can give you the book a little bit cheaper because I don't have to pay fees. They're using your emotions. They're using a little bit of greed, that desire to get that good deal. They're using those things against you and they're getting you to just send your hard earned money with no protection, zero protection. Use PayPal. As, as many frustrations as we have with PayPal uh, use PayPal, use something that gives you some type of protection. And no, PayPal is not perfect at all, but it's better than just willy nilly sending someone your money with no protection at all. So with that said, I'm going to, I'm going to end this part of the video. I want to show you guys a couple of really cool books that showed up here at the house. Uh, and there is definitely a theme here. There is no doubt about that. The very first book, Marvel Superheroes Secret Wars issue number nine, a really cool book there. Nothing particularly special about this issue, uh, but it is a really cool book. This this series was, I believe, the best selling series that Marvel had, certainly at the time in, in the 80s and maybe even to this day. I don't know. Uh, somebody would have to fact check me on that one. Really cool Doom cover here. This is, again, Marvel Superhero Secret Wars issue number 10. This one, too, is a 9.8 with white pages. Really cool book that I am pleased to uh, add to the collection. I have a lot of copies of these issues in the 100k collection i don't think that they are 9.8 worthy which is why i decided to go out and actually buy them this next one right here is uh same title issue number 11 direct edition this too is a 9.8 white pages but this one is a cbcs book and uh i i like cbcs i like cgc especially when they come for, you know, as a 9.8 for a great price. So I ended up picking this one up and uh, all of these books were actually purchased from a reputable website, mycomicshop.com. It's a site that I use a lot. And, uh, and again, picked up all of these. The very last one that I'll show you 
probably no surprise at this point, is also a 9.8 with white pages. This is uh, Secret Wars issue number 12. And uh, again, a really cool book. I have several copies of this in the collection, one of which is actually an AOK -OK from Bueller. He sent that to me a couple of years ago and I have it across the room. So with that said, I want to wrap this video up. I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch. Again, the first part of this video was about us protecting ourselves. I do not believe that these scammers are part of the comic book community. I believe that they are outsiders trying to infiltrate, trying to take advantage of us. We need to close ranks. We need to protect ourselves, protect the community. And part of the way that we can do that is by using some of the tips that I referenced early on in this video. Certainly, if you have any issues, questions, comments, or thoughts, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I am always available, primarily on Instagram at Reggie Collects. Take care. Rapper, rolling, rolling.